Well, um, hello and welcome to this exciting webinar uh, that is organized by Park Launch. My name is Roha Nadeem. I'm a sports broadcaster and a multimedia content creator. I host a podcast called Ultra Edge on Crickwick, and uh, I'm also a evening scholar. It's really great to be here. I'm very pleased to be hosting and moderating this uh, webinar. I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, the panelists joining us tonight for this seminar, starting with Mr. Ali Nakvi. He is the owner of uh, the PSL franchise Islamabad United, who won the season in 2016 and 2018. He is also the founder and CEO of Alethea Capital. Mr. Ali Nakvi, thank you so much for joining this uh, webinar. I hope you're doing good. Thank you, Rohan, for having us. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm also joined by uh, Mr. Ali Khan Tareen. He is the Managing Director of Grassroots Cricket and uh, Jahangir Khan Group of Companies. He's the former owner of the PSL franchise, Multan Sultans, and that, that won the season in 2021. Ali Tareen, it's so good to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Roha, always a pleasure uh, being on your show, uh, being a, a part of the panel. Well, lovely um, to have both of you join us for this webinar. Now, the, the, the context that was given to us is very broad. Uh, Pakistan, sports, and the global context. So a lot to discuss tonight. And we will also be taking questions, uh, which will be towards the end of this session. So before that, we'll just sort of try and see where this conversation goes. Starting with, of course, something that binds all of us uh, in this webinar right now, PSL, right? The, the brand has grown bigger and bigger every year. It's it's something that connects the entire nation. Every year we see, we see uh, more and more people coming out to the stadiums to support their franchises and those who can't even make to the stadiums uh, do so through their social media platforms and just sort of bringing, it just sort of brings the whole community together. And uh, speaking of PSL, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Uh, Nakvi, Ali Nakvi. Uh, PSL, you have been there from the start. You have seen the brand um, sort of start from scratch where it was all those years ago in 2016 when there were so many people who, who did not really believe in, in, the, in the vision that um, the PSL stood for. But today, looking back, you know, eight years, nine years on, it has become the biggest sports brand in Pakistan. First of all, what do you attribute that success to? And where do you see this brand going as far as the global context of sport goes? Roha, uh, I think if I may start, you use the word scratch actually, right? So, so we obviously started from scratch in 2016. Um, uh, if I may say, I think we are still scratching the surface of what PSL can do um, for Pakistan, uh, for cricket and for Pakistan. Um, and I'll tell you the reasons why I'm, I'm saying that. I think when in 2016, when it started, um, uh, people who came in, uh, came in with a simple mission, actually. And, and the mission was that, uh, and this has been, uh, that story has been told, so I will not go into a lot of details on that. But the mission was that uh, Pakistan uh, cricket actually is second to none. Um, and there is no reason why we should not have a very successful professional uh, league. It was as simple as that, despite all the challenges which we have had. Um, at that point in time, including the absence of international cricket, security, blah, 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 lack of infrastructure. Um, and then obviously we showed faith, the PCB showed faith, and then ultimately uh, the fans uh, just lapped it up. Um, and we never looked back. The reason I'm saying that we are only scratching the surface is that since 2016, if you look at the last eight seasons, um, obviously it has become the biggest brand in Pakistan uh, and probably the second biggest brand in uh, league cricket. Um, uh, globally, um, but but the challenges have been um, immense. Uh, we started in 2016. Security was an issue. Bringing it in uh, into Pakistan was a big question mark. People didn't believe in that. Uh, it came to Pakistan the moment it came to Pakistan, 2018, 19, and then COVID happened. Uh, so for the last three four years, uh, because of COVID, um, there was uh, literally very little on the ground fan uh, presence. Uh, and we never had the infrastructure ready uh, for that as well. So season eight is the first season where you actually had the whole uh, season in Pakistan uh, in front of fans. 
uh, and that also uh, in front of uh, four four cities basically right we we still haven't gone into all the six or seven cities which theoretically it should happen uh, based on the number of teams which are there so that's why i'm saying that so that's that's one angle the second angle is that uh, there's very little still infrastructure uh, available which is up, up to international standards in pakistan uh, and simply because for 10 years uh, if, if, from 2000 late 2007 8 9 to 2016 there was no international cricket. So cricket completely changed. Uh, so not only that we lag behind our, our infrastructure, but also uh, cricket completely changed. So to catch up actually takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. So that's the second thing, which I think PCB is doing a great job in actually trying to uh, bring that infrastructure uh, at par or close to at par to the, to the, rest, of the uh, rest of the world. Uh, and, and stadium is only one part. The second part, which Pakistan used to take pride on, uh, is on the uh, broadcasting and production side. And if you remember, apart from our players, our commentators, our production teams, all of them actually used to be part of international uh, circuit that they used to go out and actually uh, do the, those great, great productions. Uh, and all of them actually went out of the system. So, so we have to learn all those things again as well. So from being 100% reliant on imported um, human resource, uh, now we are actually switching and getting our uh, people uh, and infrastructure trained. So, so that's the second thing which is coming. And the third thing is that the fan-based learning as well. You need to create that ecosystem where fans have strong uh, following and basis, and that has only started to happen in the last two, three seasons. So that's why I'm saying that it's only scratching the surface. I think we have a long way to go. Um, as far as uh, PSL is concerned. And once PSL is there, then other, I think, sports leagues will come uh, around that as well. Right. You talked about um, the fan base, right? I'm, Ali, Tari, I'm going to come to you with that now because the fan experience is something that you very closely um, engaged with uh, when we used to see you around in those matches, you know, proudly um, wearing the merch and just going into the stands talking to people, you've always been, uh, li quite literally, you've been at the grassroots of things. Uh, so as far as the fan base of PSL goes, how how much do you think that has evolved, you know, where we, from where we started? Um, who was the target audience for the PSL brand? And today, where does that target audience stand? And how quickly is it expanding and targeting more diverse demographics? For example, uh, women, you know, girls, Pour into sports as well. So, how do you see this PSL fan base evolving through the years? Um, Ali, you're on mute right now. If you could just. Uh... Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. Um, that's something I really focused on during my time with uh, the Sultans, where we found that even so, even when PSL was in Dubai, I remember just as a fan when I used to go and watch the matches, the stadium stadiums would be empty. And, you know, we assume that when, once they come to Pakistan, obviously stadiums will likely be full. Obviously, the first one or two matches we had, they were full for the final and semifinal. But when the whole season came in Pakistan, you would see that people weren't, people weren't as willing or wanting to come to the stadium. And obviously, I spoke to, a, a, as a cricket fan myself, I could understand that it was very hard going to stadiums. It's not a pleasant experience for boys and girls to go from their house, parking there. Everyone being directed somewhere, eventually parked somewhere. bus bus is overcrowded. security Everyone just piled up on top of each other. Then you get into a bus. Then you get to the stadium. Then you go to the stands. I remember growing growing up, used to go to matches in Gaddafi Stadium. Lati charge to We all accepted it. But inside, now it was a great atmosphere. You had, you know, pizza stands. You had food over here. You had ice cream here. In this tight security, ka zamana, just coming to, the coming to the stadium is a hassle. And once you're there, bus, there's nothing else happening. Ek to, even the views are blocked with giant barricades. It's not, koi khana nahi aara, koi maza nahi ho rahe. Mata, it's not, you're not enjoying just being there. You have only dedicated cricket fans go. So I've, I, I've gone with a couple of friends of mine, uh, pre, uh, pre owning uh, Multan Sultans. And halfway through, most of my friends who aren't cricket fans are like, you know, Aada match ho gaya, you know, I think we're going home now. Because, and only the hardcore cricket fan would stay on. So I think that's something we really need to focus on. And, and, and that's what people like in pe things in the IPL, even here in the, in, the, in the English cricket season here, a lot of people is doing this. A, a lot of teams are doing this where they're active, actively focusing on um, uh, stadium experiences. So this is the kind of stuff they need to change. So when I was in, uh, in Multan Sultans, 
one thing we noticed was that a chalo this is something the pcb will do but what can we do as a franchise how can we engage the people more so we started thinking okay let's if we're a multan team let's go to different places in multan do some activities and invite people to the stadium make it easy for them because a lot of people say you know, how can we get tickets but even the tickets thing outsourced to you know website a lot of people would go there people wouldn't know about it it wouldn't be advertised properly i know i remember ali and um, uh, salman ikbal were two of the pioneers who were talking about you know how can we get more people to get tickets more easily so how can we provide them tickets so they can come easier so even as owners we were thinking about this but so uh, one thing was that we tr- we tried a lot of things but you know pcb a lot obviously they gave us a lot of support but they weren't really that focused on this point so for example i remember we would say you know we have these many games in multan we want to book you know three stands and we'll just you know we'll buy all the tickets and then we'll invite people and guests and we'll give them to um, girls schools boys schools we get people from universities you know we'll get people uh, retired sports people coming there pcb would like you know aap khud ja ke apne tickets the le rahe hain okay we'll buy you a bunch i'm okay we don't want a bunch we want the stands we can decorate them hum you know kuch khane layenge wo layenge there's no 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 we, this this can't happen it's too much of a hassle chodo so we weren't really encouraged we weren't really let we, we weren't given the opportunity to really focus on the fans like we wanted as psl owners so i think there's definitely a lot of room to grow in that area well i definitely agree with that because you know as someone who has been to the matches um you know more uh, often than not i am in the media gallery which is much more um safeguarded and much more um like the access is much easier but as a fan you know i've been i've i've gone to these matches with friends and family at times and it has become a hassle uh, not only to just get to the like you rightly pointed out that getting to the ground itself is a hassle but also uh, getting out of it and being feeling safe as a woman feeling safe in that yep. environment it's something that um, really needs to be thought about because in at the end of the day it's just um, you know you can't just have one set of uh the demographic coming in and enjoying you know psl has to be owned by everybody and i really really hope that people exactly. do it's that exactly it's not and and we're a great point it's not just about chalo this i i feel when we talk to we've spoken to pcb they think now we've gotten these many people in we had in the ponch game but karachi stadium there's no worse viewing experience for a cricket match than karachi stadium i went to the psl final when i was when we when i was the owner quetta ka final tha i went to watch it in hanif ahmed stand mein ka maza aayega to put bench my friends we had like 20 of us we got there like 2 hours before the match we got seats lower on samne these giant junglas you're so far from the ground you can't see anything we atmosphere nahi hota i'm like what, yeah. what, how is this a, this was the vip section i'm like this is vip you are just to watch it at home in your on your hd tv but so much better point... so much better so when they <laughs> when people see the venue the karachi stadium is empty obviously it's empty and who wants to watch it and it's just very it makes you wonder because mr nakvi also mentioned right now that we've only played the psl in the bigger cities as of now and we are yet to go into um peshawar and quetta and multan and sort of uh, really own these cities and how will you how do you um expect to do that in the smaller cities if you can't really manage it um in a sophisticated infra- infrastructure like for example the qazafi stadium but anyway um fingers crossed i really hope that this experience does improve and it's an ongoing thing and i really really hope that we can see some improvement in that um uh, mr nakvi uh, you know you have as we discussed samwad united has uh, been it 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 would not be wrong to say that it is um probably the most successful franchise of the psl in terms of results in terms of consistency in terms of um applying those um innovative techniques that you know are often lo- neglected or maybe you are always the first ones to innovate and to to believe in uh thinking out of the box you know your hashtag is also uh dimag say which also sort of really uh, perfectly states what the franchise culture is all about now we're talking about the global context so first of all as a franchise owner where do you see the Uni- samabad united or the united franchise um expanding you know because we have seen with the IPL you know the franchise owners they have expanded on to other leagues across the world and uh, the players are being allowed to feature in all these leagues there are these huge contracts being made you know that bind that bind these players and so so much is going on there's so much commercial value attached to playing with one franchise 
what do you what is your take on these franchises going global um when it comes to samabad united so um i think if i may if you allow me uh, if i may uh, make a comment actually on your previous question uh, to ali um and then i'll come to this as well i think if if in the, because you guys focus on 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 startups in the new economy so so think of psl in the startup uh, lingo and the lingo basically is that it's the first or second version of app coming in and obviously it will have a lot of teething problems as the as the user experience goes in there will be a huge feedback coming that okay what needs to be improved so the user experience is not smooth the user experience is not great we have to think about security we have to think about the infrastructure we have to think about the response rate so whatever you have in the startup lingo can be applied to psl as well uh, and that's why i say so it's glass half full or half empty despite all these issues it's the biggest brand in pakistan and imagine as over the years uh, the whole ecosystem learns because i think you have to appreciate that people have to learn uh, to see what needs to be done to have a better user experience whether that's on the security personnel side or infrastructure side or the infrastructure improvement most of our cricket stadiums are very you know old style basically right what ali is talking about they they are not uh, equipped to have a very immersive close experience so and how do you change that overnight it's very difficult to change that infrastructure so i think that which each as, as i will say which each version new version of that psl season coming through and pcb cricket overall you will see improvements coming um so so to me that's the first thing i think the second thing is it's um, i think it's in, in it's very tempting actually to think about uh, going global and buying leagues in um uh, buying teams in other leagues uh, let me let me put some perspective um around it um apart from ipl and probably bbl uh, none of the other leagues are profitable still so um so i think i think going into other teams actually is easy uh but the key is that whether they are sustainable or not because we worked on a lot of um, you know cpl lpl other teams uh, to to see whether uh, they have a sustainable model um ipl obviously has a very uh, different uh, model uh, and the reason they are going in um, um is also uh, because what the english clubs do as well it's a, a, a lot to do with um uh, income tax taxation how do you value how do you try to actually manage your uh, pnl so so i think we we need to stay very uh, objective and and uh, what i've seen is that in um in businesses where passions are involved it's like sports or like entertainment um it's even more important to stay very focused on whether the whether the uh, initiatives can be sustainable so i think we should definitely think about go, go, going global and looking at other leagues um but at the same time we need to make sure that first our psl actually is at a level that it actually can be sustained and replicated uh, and as we are discussing right now there's so much that needs to be done within psl first i think if we can make psl truly truly a top 2 uh, league that in itself will be a huge achievement right frankly we don't need to worry about what happens in cpl or what happens in lpl uh, we have a two, we have the second largest fan base in the world uh and if we can give them a very good experience where ali takes his 20 uh, friends with him and is really happy coming out of that match i i think that to me personally and i if i may say that as a collective psl or pcb that should be our first aim and then everything else comes uh, later right i completely agree with that because it really starts at home like every measure of success you start at home and then you build on uh, on that foundation um ali tareen i'm going to talk to you okay so this question i'm going to like i i want the both of you to give your two cents on this because i'm sure as franchise owners and of course ali as a former franchise owner this question um you must have gotten this what a thousand times already and um, this is a topic that has been really talked about um Ali Tareen, first of all, I'll, I'd like your two cents on it. In order to make PSL a bigger brand, in order to draw in more of the big bucks, do you think the auction model is something that should definitely be considered? Because of course, everything c- comes down to the money and the auction model. You know, there were talks a couple of years as well. You know, PSL might move towards you know the the auction style of things, and it's. become it it has proven to be so successful in other leagues 
Do you think that this is something that the PCB will at any time or should they uh, consider? Because obviously it does lead to a lot of, a lot more money coming in. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I think this is a I think this is a misunderstanding of the of the auction model. So for, if the concern is that if we don't pay the players you know a certain amount of money, they won't come, that's fine. In the draft model, you have top tier platinum. You double it. You have to triple it. You can increase the 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 upgrade of gold. You can you, you can pay them double. You can pay the platinum double, and you're suddenly paying them a similar values to IPL. You'll have these in IPL. You have these one-off players who are getting in the millions, but the but the average across the league and the and the players are way getting way paying a similar amount. It, it's the question is only how much should you pay the top players, and whether that's the auction model as an average or whether that's the category model. Both of you, and it's not about. I think bringing value to a, a league is not that you have to give a player a lot of money. Because I think what, the most exciting part about PSL are the people who come and make huge impacts. For example, in recent years, uh, last two years, one of the most exciting players the PSL has had, two of them, one is Will Smead for Quetta, one is Harry Brooks for Lohkan Anders. Were these guys the big multi-million contracts? No, they weren't. They were the young, exciting guns out of nowhere, came and lit up stadiums. And people loved it. Were they happy? Yeah, we have oh, we have these established names coming in, or were these young guns more exciting? At least for me, I think Harry Brook and Will Smith and these guys were way more exciting than the more established even players somebody, coming in. Even somebody so like Tim, think, Tim David coming in, somebody like Tim, Tim David, David exactly. coming into the PSL so, and then going to the exciting. IPL and being the highest sold um, player. So that really shows you where the graph so is going. And and to the earlier point about. Uh, the future of PSL, uh, I, uh, about, I know Ali was talking about it earlier about we have to focus on the PSL and uh, has to be profitability. I, 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 I don't agree with this. Um, I think the future of any, football, uh, any professional league, whether it's football, whether it's cricket in the IPL, any of these things, it didn't change when oh, they started investing abroad. Uh, it changed when institutional money started coming in the game. It's when these big institutional investors from abroad, from the US, from these investment groups, they started investing in teams. Once this inflow of large amounts of capital comes in, that's when your thinking changes. So Abhi, for example, we're talking about you know P uh, PSL, ideally every franchise should have its own stadium and then they can do you know more fan engagement, they can do more activities. Abhi, we're looking at the PCB. The PCB has an own six stadiums. Abhi, the Multan Stadium, mein, it's leased to, to the PCB from the local government. So if we want to say, listen, as Multan Sultans, we want to make some changes, PCP can't authorize it. Because the local government, local P Multan ke DC ko phone karna padega ki yaar actually hum kar rahe hai, it has to go through the board, then it has to go. Ho nahi sakta. It's only when every team has enough institutional money coming in, it's ideally in dollars, that you can say, we're gonna, every team is going to build our own stadium. Once we build our own stadium, we're going to put in VR, we're going to put in motion direction, we're going to put in, you know, van engagement at booths and activities, and we're going to rent it out for events and so on, so on, so on. That's when you have money to say, okay, because we have so much money coming in, investing in this team, now this holding company is going to invest in a team abroad. So it's not the original owners who are investing in teams abroad and expanding it. The, in, the original people like Ali Nakvi and the pioneers who started PSL brought it up to a certain level. The next step, the next, as Ali was saying, the uh, 2.0 version is when international investment comes in in any startup. And that's when you go global and you start thinking big because you have the money coming and you start thinking actually PL may teak jara, but in the next 10 years, I'm going to invest this much capital in a stadium here, in a training facility here, in a team in the US, a team in um, South Africa. And in those 10 years, I'm going to build my base here. And that's the value I will deliver to my shareholders and the value I'll give back. That's when things start changing. And in the IPL, look at the values. The values aren't the original owners. How many of the original owners still own 100%? It's all with the new international capital going in. So I feel the, the next step for PSL is international investors coming in, joining with the original founding investors, taking a percentage, maybe it's a majority percentage, and together growing the pie and becoming a global global brand. That's my, in my view, is the future of PSL. Uh, I mean, Nafi, I'd like to rope you in uh, on this and love to hear your two cents on this. So auction um i think auction sounds very exciting uh, it sounds very exciting simply because then when the draft happens actually there's an auction and everybody gets a kick out of it basically essentially right it's nothing more than that so 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 it's very appealing to the fan base 
um, uh, but it doesn't change the dynamics. I think the dynamics uh, can be addressed by, as as Ali suggested, that if you want to pay the 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 top guys more, you can always pay that. You can you can that that within that pool, um, you can always um, um, always uh, move it around. Number one. Number two is I think I think I, I just want to emphasize that. PSL actually is very very competitive. If you take IPL out, uh, the hundred, the top limit for hundred, uh, you know, uh, in what two months time or six weeks is a hundred thousand pounds. So so it's a, it's a, it's it's being done by a very rich board, much richer board than than PCB, uh, and and that actually is only 40, 50 percent of what uh, what PSL is paying to their top. Uh, players, so I think we, it's a it's a misnomer to say that OPSLV oh, is not paying competitively. Num number one, number two is that I think there will always be new leagues coming, which will not have any fan base of their own at home, and would like to throw money, right? And and ILT, um, if I may say, is 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 one of those. They they have zero fan base, and so the only thing they can do is actually they can come in actually and try to throw money. But but that actually cannot be sustainable because you don't have a home fan base. So so that's the so so we have to actually see each league how um, its position. Um, and, and to me, apart from three or four leagues, when I say it's IPL or PSL or uh, BBL, and actually probably now South African league because they have a very strong home base. Um, so uh, so those leagues probably are um, are are viable, sustainable, and um, can grow. Um, number one. Uh, number two is, I think, I don't know whether we should uh, move into the institutional money and what it can do and how cricket can evolve. But I think I, I have a little bit broader perspective than only PSL. Uh, because, uh, and if I may say so, this is nothing to do with Pakistan, just in broader thing that, that uh, cricket is the only, uh, only, I think, large sports left, which is actually driven by a colonial setup. Uh, which is that the ICC? There is no reason why uh, there should be a dictatorial setup. So, and I, I don't have a problem with that, right? It's okay, fine. It is what it is. But the reality is that that I think is going to come under a lot of stress over the next three, four years. Um, and and the reason is that as IPL type of leagues actually become bigger, uh, as you have six, seven leagues globally, um, then um, whether it's the Tim Davids of this world or the you know, stars of Pakistan, actually, they will start getting a lot of these uh, offers coming and they can be theoretically occupied 60, 70, 80 percent of their time uh, in the calendar year in those leagues, which can be financially very rewarding. Um, and if that starts to happen, then there'll be only those uh, competing things. And I'm um, I, I'm a much uh, I'm a much older vintage than than both of you, but we remember Kerry Packer days actually, right? And 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 that was a very very small thing. One isolated person was able to actually disrupt that. Imagine a lot more, much bigger change coming, disruption coming from a much bigger uh, league uh, table. Uh, that I think is is going to be a big challenge for everyone, and and we need to be prepared for it as. As, as PCB, as cricket, and I'm saying that only as an outsider, not, not in my official capacity as Islamabad United. There's no reason why if, if soccer is played in a certain way uh, or N N NBA is played in a certain way, why uh, cricket continues to be played in a very old way. I, I think that's a challenge for everyone. And then, then PCB and PSL needs, needs to see, see how they need to position themselves within that because there's a bigger challenge and then within that, there is an IPL, and the, because of the geopolitics, there is another challenge for us, especially, right? So, so, so there are the, those two concentric circles, and the overlap is where we exist, and we need to make sure that we actually position ourselves so that we actually can uh, stay sustainable and prosper. Yeah, that's a great point. By I also want to add to this. I think uh, the mo the very concerning thing that's happening now, just as a as a PSL fan. Is the is India? You can see IPL and the, them owning teams in the Caribbean, in South Africa, and now in uh, the UAE. Um, is that they're hoping to give a, a yearly contract to these star players, right? So they play in those teams throughout the year because they own teams at different that play at different times of the year. So they, they'll give you one annual contract, and then they're locked in with them for the whole year. They're, they're, they're talking to coaches about this. They're talking to players about this. And from uh, support staff as well. So, if you look at what's happening in the in the cricket window, 
so when is psl played we are played in feb march you know that window so previously because there was nothing happening in the ue we occupied that spot in the global calendar and that was an amazing premium spot that we had and we had for a while now the ilt 20s come up so now they're playing in jan that part right the the, the winter part in the ue which is, when the weather is great so then it's ilt 20 is it pelos of the bp it is happening in december them in jan us in feb march and then the ipl now the new league coming up which is the saudi league now they in talks with the ipl to start a league you know supported with them so now if there's the bangladesh premier league if they get the act together in december then it's the ilt 20 and then it's ipl ke pehle break aata hai usme psl bhi ho raha hai usme saudi bhi ho raha hai cuz that's when the saudi league will like likely happen so that and again saudi league likely going to be a rich league like the ilt 20 so i'm really worried about having psl squeezed by these indian control leagues of ilt 20 south africa saudi league and P- ipl in one stretch in the in the winter psl ki jagah kahan hogi so unless we really st- up our game and i'm talking about pcb i'm talking about this inter- institutional investors coming in globalizing the brand of psl i think we're going to get squeezed so we really need psl owners really need to focus on growing global asap well um that those are some wonderful points uh, because uh, as we've already discussed uh, a few weeks back ali was um, ali tarin was on my show and you also discussed how much pressure this puts on a player as well because you know most times he will have to make that choice between you know representing his country you know that national contract versus of course the financial incentives of playing leagues around the world and then of course the scrutiny that comes with it um but yeah that's another debate i'm going to move on to um, another topic now because we've talked a lot about the growth of psl and, and where it might be leading um ali tarin if if you could continue um you know you can have a great team you know you've you've seen it yourself multan uh, when you first joined the psl dynamic multan didn't do really well that year but then later on you know they just just picked up momentum and a few tweaks here and there and they were the winners and nobody saw that coming but they were there and they lifted the trophy but of course from there on every year you can't go on winning trophies you know that you have bad days you have good days how do you measure success um in a brand in a in a dynamic like psl where there's so much emotional um data uh in, involved there's so many stakeholders you know you there's fans there's of course broadcasters the, the franchise itself as a franchise owner how do you see or how do you tell yourself i am successful my franchise is winning or losing that doesn't matter i am successful how do you measure that um i think the two teams i'll speak about here that i really admire and i think they really got something right i think in terms you can't you can't you can't say that unless you win a trophy you had an unsuccessful season obviously this consistency hoti hai in terms of you can have different metrics of um how many what what your net run rates are per year aap kitna score kar rahe ho kitna defend kar rahe ho bahut zyada aap detail mein ja sakte ho but i think the team that i when i talk to people i tell them the most consistent team in the psl is zalmi zalmi has always qualified for the knockouts every season koi as a season so it's not about big peaks of highs and big peaks of lows that's you know obviously the different team different thing but the consistency is when your minimum isn't too low and then you have always have the opportunity to have that winning trophy so in my mind zalmi is the most consistent team in terms of performance where they're always solid they may be not be might not be exceptional but they're always solid so that's i think some, somehow they have that system right and secondly i think lahore calendars i really admire the way they've they a they're just doing so much more than all the other teams in terms of fan engagement in terms of player development so i so just for player development wise i think there's um, some different different explanations the way i see player development is if you are just grooming players already in the system that's giving them a platform that's great but true player development is when you bring people from outside the system and through you they join the system so i think that is what lahore calendars has done a lot with their player development program haris raf being a prime example completely out of the system didn't play domestic until lahore calendars found them and he came in so lahore with the, for example now they have a performance center where not only their own players but for example osama mir mentioned uh, that he used to practice at the at the uh, lahore high performance center when he was trying to recover his form so you know this kind of stuff that really shows that 
this team has gone above and beyond the to tournament playing team and has become an institution in the world of cricket, especially in Lahore. So I think Lahore with their engagement and their player development and Zamni with their on-field consistency, I really feel these two are doing something right. So hats off to them. Well, that's very rightly pointed out. We all know the success story of uh, Lahore Kalandas and how much they've invested in their PDP program. And that's for everybody to see. But it's interesting how you um, how you spoke about consistency being key rather than the highs and the lows and those peaks. Um, but yeah, credit to, to Zalmi and how they have managed to remain consistent. Although, uh, you know, we haven't really seen them um, really live up to their potential because it's always in those playoffs that they just, you know, come very close. And of course, um, but that's, you know, uh, the story of every, every team. You know, there are times when you're doing good and there are times when you're not. But um, uh, Ali Nakhvi, I'm going to come to you with this. Uh, Pakistan, you know, is, we have produced some of the best athletes um, across sports, not just cricket. And, you know, there, there was a time when we were ruling the hockey world and of course snooker and then now even today besides cricket if you look at other sports Pakistan is doing well especially when it comes to um, uh, individual um, sports players who are excelling now how can we use and how can we leverage the sporting talent of Pakistan um, towards getting in more financial um, direct investment and of course improving Pakistan's brand globally you know I, I'd just like to put in an example uh, of uh, Babar Azam and Mohammad Rizwan recently speaking at Harvard University and things like that don't happen a lot for Pakistani athletes but now these gaps are being bridged and they are now the face of um, Pakistan how can we see more of that happen in, in, in Pakistan? So I think you partially answered your question, actually, right? I think the key is that if you take a step back, right? I, th I think the every country needs, or every country, institution, family, they need heroes, basically, right? Inspirational people. So, and and we had lost out uh, that th that those heroes, um, especially in that uh, difficult time period we went through in the 2000s, right? So we had people coming from the 90s, and 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 we milked them, uh, frankly, till 2010, 11, 15. But we didn't create new heroes um, simply because you know uh, because of the challenges we had at home, um, and it's only in the last five six years that you have started to create new heroes. So as you create new heroes, automatically I think the ecosystem develops, because if you have a Babar Azam or a Shadab or a Shaheen or um, or Zaman or a Haris coming, um, uh, you will have things uh, around them. Uh, when you have a hero, so you can use that hero to have uh, inspiration that actually can be through. Uh, most of the uh, corporates or the multinationals using uh, them, it can be actually exporting them through playing different leagues. It can be that, uh, you know, ICC putting a graphic, I think yesterday before King Barber and, and the whole world, uh, you know, the our neighbors trolling and, and it becoming a, a, a global phenomenon. So, so automatically, the key is to create heroes. Once you have heroes, then the ecosystem will be created. And, and those heroes have been created uh, truly in the last only three, four years. So I think we need to continue with that process and to your earlier thing as well, that uh, with the highs and lows, how do, you, how do you stay focused is that we need to have a process and we need to stick to it. Regardless of whether we lose or win, uh, you have to see that you, whether you're sticking to the process of, or not. If you're sticking to the process, that's fine because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And the same, I think, goes for this ecosystem as well. There's no shortcut, but as long as we continue to provide uh, excellence and provide heroes to the nation, then that ecosystem will be created around it. I think, I think Babur and, and Shadab and others are so many of them become ambassadors for startups as well. So, so it's, I think it actually is, is happening across the board um, and will continue to happen. The same will happen in broadcasting um, uh, and other production that you have so many now people going out. We, we talk about the players going out, but we should also uh, appreciate that there are so many of these broadcasters, strategists, team managers, they are actually going out and, and, and playing uh, and managing teams in other leagues. So we already have started that process of marketing and, and there's no marketing, better marketing than actually a Pakistani actually going and doing well uh, in whatever capacity they go in, in some foreign land and, and you create friends and an ecosystem around it. So I, I think that process has already started. You're right. You know, the, the point you mentioned about 
us not having those heroes to have these ecosystems around. And now we do have those names popping up. Credit to um, all of the people who are involved in sports management and athlete management and how they're sort of doing their best to bring these. Because most often these athletes themselves are not equipped or not aware of um, the, the impact that they have and they can have. So that's that's really encouraging to see that, you know, we're starting to uh, go towards uh, that side. Ali Tareen, I want to bring you in on this next question. So cricket, you know, you're somebody who has um, stakes in Pakistan's domestic circuit as well. Now you're involved in the grassroots and you, are, you run your own academy as well. So you really are aware of all the challenges that come uh, with creating these, not just being part of franchises, but also being at very uh, grassroots uh, of the sport. Now, if you look, if you take a step back and if you look at it from um, a spectator's perspective, you know, forget for a second that you're involved and just view cricket as a spectator. Do you think the sport itself um, is keeping itself um, competitive when it comes to soccer, when it comes to these esports, all of these other ways, forms of sports in terms of gaming and all of these bigger brands that are popping up now? Do you think cricket, because we still only have a handful of teams playing test cricket, and that has not changed in the last 10, 20 years. Where do you see cricket really? How do you see rather cricket competing with these other ever so evolving sports, you know, in, in this global context? I think cricket is a, is, is a, is a sport that has taken its time to evolve. So even the new formats, knowing that it's a shorter attention span, they're trying new things globally where T20 was came up. Then now then T10 came up thinking that might be it, but maybe that didn't catch on as well. It was too short, not enough, not enough nuance in it. Now the 100 came up as an option that hasn't really taken off. So I think we're trying things a little late, but it is evolving in terms of the broadcasting, in terms of the quality, in terms of the way we're playing it. So it's an ever evolving sport. Um, I think entertainment wise, the focus, I think the biggest gap we have is not what's happening on the field, but what's happening in the stadium. As we mentioned earlier, the fan engagement isn't where it could be compared to uh, um, sports around the world. There isn't really a pathway system in terms of fan engagement. So for example, you'll see, for example, the NBA is huge in, in, in the US globally also, but it starts with the love of basketball at a college level. So college games are huge in the States. And that's where your love for basketball and that atmosphere and going to the games, watching them live, that's where it develops, where you're going every week. Same with NFL, college football is a huge thing there. I think for us, we're only focusing on the final product, which is the international stuff in the PSL. We don't, we're not really focusing on, okay, guys, how are we getting people involved in watching cricket and being part of this? Oh, you know, I go to the stadium with my father, you know, my first game I went with my family and my friends. Well, obviously we grew up we're doing this, but now, with all the security concerns, this is not what's happening. So I think what cricket, cricket needs to do is make it more of a community feel where you're going to your local game on the weekend, you're going to your school games, you're going, you know, that's something you're going to regularly. And then also that passion takes you towards PSL, international cricket, and test cricket. Yahanto test cricket, when, when I, I come here every summer and I go to as many test games as I can, because you know, it's like a whole thing. People are going, getting all their friends. It's like a day out, right? This it's like oh, I'm picnic karne ja rahe hai Test cricket Pakistan is an azab. Aap baithe hote ho for the whole day. Koi khane ka scene nahi hai. Seats are comfortable hai. Koi ghash aaz nahi hai. Kahin baith nahi sakte aap. Koi aapko you can't really bring your own food from home. Yahan to picnic lagi hoti hai lords mein. You know, so I think that's where we really, where really uh, we we need to up our game there, especially in Pakistan. Ali, I think you're forgetting, you know, things like the Tapal T Lounge and all the thousands of other sponsors that are coming in and asking uh, the audiences to. 20 people who get selected for Tapal T Lounge are lucky, but the non 20 people now. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah, I think no, yeah, yes. if I may, actually, on there, there are two points there. I think I think the first one is that if other sports actually benefit and come through, that actually is good for cricket as well. Because I think competition yeah, in everything is good. Because right now, cricket thinks that, if, you know, it's only cricket and nothing else in Pakistan, which which I think, you know, people people who are, who are frankly, sometimes managing it as well, like you take it for granted that, okay, you know, we are the only game in town. Uh, so if you have other sports coming that I think will be actually better for cricket um, um, and also for the infrastructure of sports. I think that's the first one. 
the second thing is especially on e sports um i think they are not mutually exclusive i think the the the, the way in two years three years four years whenever um uh, it actually is going to be much more immersive whether you are in the stadium or at home you actually theoretically should be watching should have a uh, a uh, roha uh, uh, roha's actually commentary going on in an inbox uh, next to it actually and then you should have an e sports some e sports related cricket thing going on and you may be playing on that as well so it actually will and you may be in the metaverse actually and having some other discussion so it actually will become very very interactive so a lot of these things coming up will actually help the overall ecosystem uh, and I- individual sports right it's great i, I, I it's completely fine. agree it's great yeah it's funny you mentioned that because um you know and I, i was going to come to this as well the topic of technology and how we're integrating it into the whole fan experience but uh, ali nakvi just mentioned that you know there is so much more that can be um incorporated in the fan experience for example the the metaverse and all of that but it's so funny if you think about it because uh, now if you go and watch a game um in lahore more often than not you don't even get mobile signals so we're so far behind <laughs> um getting that yeah. technological so fan that we are often like of course in the press gallery you have signal and you have wifi but in the fans uh, in the stadiums other because of security reasons um you you most often don't even have signals and that's just that creates more um bottlenecks anyway we uh, we've spoken a lot about the fan experience and i'm sure this is a debate that will uh, continue to evolve uh, but coming towards technology ali nakvi um now technology is something that islamabad united has has always really um uh, felt strongly about as far as data uh, goes you know your your captain proudly uh, says that we are a data driven team and you know he he prides himself on it of course the franchise stands for it but he also takes responsibility when sometimes the data does not um you know help in the way that it that you hope it would but talking about data integration and how much islamabad has um you know um believed in that from bef- from way before other teams did where do you see technology integration going um as far as the future of your franchise is concerned what more do you think can be done and um because now only you know the pcb uh, have also started really looking at uh data analysts and really like sort of giving them more importance than they historically have so credit to the to the, fra- the franchise owners like yourself who have brought forward that idea but moving forward where do you see technology integration going you know from this point on so, so i think i think yeah i think broadly there there are three three i would i would segment them in three different parts i think the first one is the data analysis the analytic side right how each bowler you can actually do a matchups and all that stuff right and that's something which you know frankly we did money money ball basically that's what we uh, you know we had read the book watched the movie so so we thought we should do that we started with that i think muldan actually uh, adopted it very very quickly from 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 the first season uh, and now now i think it's widely used data availability um, uh, is widely i think where the difference could be that data availability is there who uses the data under pressure the the key is that actually right data availability is now i think i think why so that one is data analytics i think the second one is where technology actually is making a big difference is on the on the way fans see the sport actually the way it's experienced whether that's actually on our, our drs system that's actually how it's broadcasted all and that will continue to evolve as i was saying before that you should actually literally have insets and boxes in your screen you should have multiple things going on and and experiencing i think the third one is the is the fan experience and fan experience inside the stadium and outside the stadium um and that's where i think um um a lot lot more can be done whether that's your uh, we're talking about nba the nba top shots on the nfts actually whether that actually the instead of trading cards you actually go, go on to the soft side and start having uh, nfts or the or, or the video clips and start collecting those instead of we used to actually get the autographs and now whether you can get the digital autographs uh, i think that's uh that's one whether going into the metaverse actually and experiencing what we tried to do this year uh was the first time actually a metaverse was developed stadium was developed by by any cricket team um uh, globally uh, so i think those will become much much more immersive and and, and to, to your point about signals uh, having signals issue in the stadium i think to me those are only feeding problems right that actually is only a matter of time they're going to go away whether they go away in one season or in three seasons at three seasons it it will go away basically so uh, but but that immersion actually will uh, continue to happen 
and once that starts to happen then the content and the monetization of content will become very important so for the boards and the and especially the players themselves as well um i think that will actually become uh, very important how they monetize it and how they protect it as well so so i think that 3 years from now it um cricket how its experience and probably the structure also uh, can be radically different right um i think we're coming uh, towards the end of uh, our session but you know i'm going to come towards questions that we've received from the listeners but before we go towards that i have a question of my own that i'd like to like um post to both of you because this is something that i strongly believe in and i really wanted to get your two cents on this it has been debated a lot a women's psl do you think it is a real possibility that we can have a full fledged women's uh psl alongside the regularly scheduled men's psl and is it viable ali tarin i'll start with you ali can you hear me ali tarin rena yeah uh, cindy one i was asking to please i can hear you can you hear me uh, ali you are i think women's psl is a no brainer just a bit of distortion there ali i'm not sure if you can um hear me but uh, ali nakvi why don't you go ahead and we can come back to ali tarin later just till he gets this sorted yeah so sure so um i i i think i think um, i'll 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 pick it up from what ali tarin was saying i think psl women um, league or uh, ali why don't you go on first uh, you can back. can you guys hear me now yeah we can uh, i was saying I feel a women's PSL is an absolute no-brainer. I've been asking for it. So um, I think I think he um, he felt too strongly about it, probably. So um, so I think it's a uh, it's a no-brainer. I'll I'll I'll, I'll second what Sorry. he's saying. Did you ask for this? so yes, uh, yes. so uh, yeah so uh, i was saying ali i i was uh, agreeing with what you were saying uh, it's uh, it's i think it's a no brainer i think the key is that how it's done and 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 how it's incorporated within the mainstream psl um and um and that's where probably me, we may have a different view with 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 ali tarin that i i think to, for it to be financially viable it needs to be done within the infrastructure of psl itself uh that will actually reduce the cost and that's what that's the reason why bbl is being done like that that's the reason why ipl is being done like that they, you know so we we don't need to reinvent the wheel you know if somebody is doing it we need to first see actually why they are doing it um and if we want to do something different we have to have a very good reason why we want to do it some completely different way right so so to me where uh, psl itself actually uh, because of the way the economic challenges are in the country um, um is 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 growing but probably not as fast um if we create another thing which is completely separate um that i think will be uh, financially very challenging i'm sure there'll be a lot of demand for it uh, i'm sure there'll be actually people who will come to pick it up i'm sure there'll be people coming in to pick it up also as a csr because it's great and and, uh, and ali actually uh, in his own personal capacity i think they do absolutely fantastic things uh, in their in their region so so i'm sure people will do that but i i strongly believe that for any anything to be sustainable it has to be financially viable at some point in time yeah i otherwise i completely agree survive. i completely agree uh, with what uh, al nafi is saying it, it ideally should be part of psl i think the only the only uh, difference of opinion here again it's not that i have a solution to this or anyone does but we have to balance out it being it what should, it what's best for the league itself but i think whoever is going to be running a women's team has to be someone who absolutely loves women's cricket and is completely oh. dedicated in growing it is making it and making it the best it can be whether the six psl teams current owners are all equally invested we don't know so as long as if they are four of the psl teams who really want a women's team ideal but we have to make sure the owners of the teams or the people running it are not thinking oh this is my side gig up next to my men's team which is my actual baby this is like a side thing i'm doing they whoever is running the women's team has to be in it 100% now whether that's the current owners or new owners it, what we'll, we'll see but i do agree that the best thing for the league as i nakvi is saying is they should be part of psl 
co-branding, synergies between players, coaches, training, equipment, uh, sorry, not, sorry, not equipment, and um, in terms of um, collaborations in leagues and matches and so on, huge. So that is, that's why the 100 is doing it and all the other leagues Ali mentioned is doing it. But the owner of that team has to be a huge women cricket fan, otherwise it's not going to work. 100% uh, agree. When I say that it should be with PSL, that does not mean that the ownership necessarily needs to be with the existing six franchises. Actually, I think we need to find a solution where if there is interest, it should be done, but it has to be focused upon independently as well. That, that I 100% I agree with. To, to me, the basic thing is that I don't think we should go through the same um, way of trying to create a new brand if Islamabad yep. United is already there, Zalmi is already there, Lahore is already there. Then we say, okay, let's create a Faisalabad Women's League, basically. Or, or, or yeah, team. yeah, I agree. You know, that in itself will take three, five years to, you know, to, to be recognized. And I don't think yeah. we should actually do that. So, hundred percent, yeah, um, gentlemen, we should move towards um, some of the questions. Uh, I think we still have a few minutes. We can squeeze in uh, some quick questions from our listeners, from the audience right now. Uh, okay, talking about, uh, and you know, you both free to um, answer as you uh, see fit. Talking about the global context and digging into the mind of a sports uh, business owner while making strategic business business decisions, do you consider the role of sport as an enabler for the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I, I think the, the, the reason, frankly, why we came in and we were very clear on from season one was that we want to use the popularity of cricket for, for more positives in um, society as a whole, actually, right? So we, we were what we call the, our, our four E's about empowerment, about education, about uh, um, uh, about uh, excellence um, and environment. Um, and that's why we had the women uh, ambassadors from season one. We had four women ambassadors coming with us as well. So, so absolutely. And anything which actually has mass appeal, like sports, like cricket, should be used for the betterment of society at large. Because the messaging is any, anything which a Sharab says or a Babar says actually carries a lot, lot more, more weight than anyone else. Right. Right, I have another very interesting question. Not sure who this is from, but Ali Tarin, I, th I thought you might like to answer this. Can a business case be made for college sports? Uh, why are they non-existent uh, in Pakistan? That's the question. Yeah, that's a great question and something we talked about earlier where that it, we need that to be that to be a big thing in order for the com community it's too much of a, okay, this is one highlight once a year for one month, and then that's it. There has to be community engagement, and it has to happen at a city level or a village level, and that's what happens through school. PCB has right. been trying to do it for a while, but hasn't really made a mark. I think this is where uh, an, an empowered franchise with international investment comes in, and they build the, the ecosystem locally and then grow it globally. So that's why I'm a huge advocate for international money coming into PSL. Right. Uh, we have a lot of questions coming in from uh, the academia, from people, uh, especially from some universities um, and the academics. So I have one question. Mr. Nakfi mentioned teething issues. What is the future of Pakistan as an event host for other international sports and entertainment events? going off of the success of PSL, can bet on seeing us being able to host other World Cups and championships and qualification events in the next 10 or even five years? So, so I have a very short answer to that. I, th I think it depends on geopolitics. I, I, I think that we, we have to have the appreciation. Again, there's a lot of emotions involved and there's, it's, it's being discussed right now as well. Uh, but I think if, if we have geopolitics and we have to appreciate that, um, that um, that uh, economics do come into play in decision making for a lot of other boards, right? So if if one board is getting thirty eight percent of ICC money, and the second board is getting six point eight percent or whatever that number is under seven percent, then you know where the where the economic strength and the power lies. So so we have to be realistic. You can be idealistic. That's absolutely fine. You can be uh, aspirational, that's absolutely fine, but but you have to be realistic at the same time too. So so I think 
we have to focus on trying to solve for um, uh, for for these uh, geopolitical things which are not in our hands or the or the board's hand. Number one, number two, if I may say, we are talking about the future of cricket a lot. Um, I think IPL success and 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 its size uh, and BCCI size, if I may say, um, um, does not necessarily mean that they will actually have a smooth sailing. To me, um, one potential scenario is, and I may throw it out there is that the biggest challenge to BCCI probably will come from IPL. Uh, so, so, so imagine if IPL teams are uh, franchises actually own six other leagues, franchises teams, and they actually have their own international circuit. Um, and somehow they are not allowed to have Indian players in it. And they know that in the Indian, when, if they have Indian players in it, they actually, the size will become 5x of whatever they have. Uh, guess what the next step will, will be? We already know that some of the Australian international players want to retire earlier because they want to play more league cricket, right? So we have, and these news keeps on coming. Um, and I think it's only a matter of time before that starts to happen for Indian players and other players too. So, so I think we, we need to stay focused on our product and keep it good at home. We have a strong fan base and then see how the system is developing and then adapt accordingly and not get swayed too much with emotions. I, I, I think that's because because our strength is our fan base at home. We have 200 million people who actually love the game and we need to stay true to them and give them a good experience. But, but how are we doing it? How are we, how are we really uh, giving the fans what they deserve? So, uh, Ali, for example, where, how many times have we asked the PCB to improve things? How many times have we talked to PCB of, to, to let us do things if they're not doing it? It doesn't happen. I feel so, unless we really take control of it and have our own stadiums with our own uh, training facilities and our own, uh, you know, system in place, we, we're never going to satisfy, we, we will never serve the fans like they should be satisfied. So I don't think that's going to happen unless we really up our game in terms of um, investments and, you know, going global. PCB So, yeah. okay. Um, I have to be, yeah, I've, I'm, uh, yeah. I, it's, uh, I think, I think getting funding is not the issue. I think getting the right regulatory infrastructure is the issue. If, and, and getting the right infrastructure actually is something which, uh, which takes time yeah. and is dependent on a lot of other Great. things which are not in our control. We actually have a quest question. And I think on this point, I want, sorry, Rohan, uh, yeah. Rohan, I just want to, on this point, I just want to, I just want to praise um, uh, Islamabad United for this. I think one of the reasons I'm so, so pro uh, institutional investment coming into PSL in the teams is because once you have this kind of in, in investment that comes in, the way the management responsibility changes. So you have you need professional management in place once this kind of institutional money comes in. You, you, the kind of the it, it brings in, enhanced governance to it. So the way Islamabad United, for example, I feel is the most professionally run franchise of all the teams, is because Ali being from the world of in, institutional investment. He was able to set up a proper management team of professionals who, who he empowered in terms of the financial performance of the team. In terms of even with PCB, they would say that Islamabad's documentation every year, all the things they have to do, all the checks, all the all the finances, everything is absolute absolutely top class. And that's because of Ali's background. The other teams, I'm not going to name anyone, but they weren't as professional. Their governing wasn't as uh, in, as as a high quality as Ali's. Their management isn't as professional as Ali's. So the more of these come, more of these institutional investors come into other teams, their own governance and management will also improve. So we are, because all of us don't have Ali's background, we don't run things like he does. So once they come right. in, I think right. this infrastructure can develop because they'll all be professionals. They'll all be this kind of high caliber international thinking people where we need this kind of governance, where we need this kind of structure. I think that's what will really uh, take PSL to a, another level. Right. Uh, so this was actually the exact question that uh, somebody asked about institution investment and the kind of the kinds of revenues and returns that it could generate. So I'm glad you guys already answered that. I'm going to move to one. I think we can take a couple more questions. Um, uh, somebody is asking, have franchise owners <coughs> considered subscription or membership model for fans? anybody would like to take oh, that. I, I can take that I, I and I can say that we have we have tried a lot we have experimented from season one onwards uh, tried a lot 
uh, I think that's part of the education process, like the metaverse we did right now. And, and we had a digital card membership actually about six months ago. Um, and on day one, we had about 25,000 people signing up. So, so, so there's, a, there's a lot of interest um, um, around it. Um, I think the, the key is that what can be provided within that and what, um, uh, what the experiences are and how easily the infrastructure supports it. So the metaverse, yeah. which you, you know, Roy, you're talking about, is not only inside the stadium, but outside the stadium as well. To have a very good um, um, uh, metaverse uh, experience requires that you have a very, very high bandwidth, basically, right? Your experience actually needs to be better. So I think those things and learning um, uh, um, uh, the whole thing actually takes time too. For us, actually, because the, because the, our fan base is not, not used to a lot of uh, new technologies. So, so coming up the curve actually takes time. But these are all, again, I would say feeding problems. There's a huge, huge demand and appetite for these things. And I think, I, I think it will happen. We have experimented. We are probably a little bit ahead of time as always in, in every season. Uh, but but we, we continue to create things which actually can be monetized. Like I think the, um, the merchandising has started to happen a little bit, especially at the PCB level and some of the, uh, some of the franchise levels as well. Um, so I think if you, give, you give it a few few more years, it will happen. I just want to add to this. I, I, again, every year, uh, Islamabad United is at the forefront of this. But description, they can't give them. We will fans. We will give them. If we say, "Okay, many fans, we are going to bring this player to you know for these twenty five people or something," PCB says no. If we say, "Okay, you know, we are going to have this kind of, before in the half time, we will do this." PCB can't do it. Security concerns. We want to do merchandise. We want to have merchandise stalls at every stadium. PCB says no. So, we'll give subscription. What do you want to do? Well, let's not uh, be really pessimistic already about this, Ali. I'm I'm glad that you're always very um, realistic with your uh, ideas and always so passionate. It's always always great to speak with you. So, again, thank you, Ali Tareen and Mr. Ali Nafri for joining us for this webinar. We had a host of issues. Uh, and topics to discuss. And I am not sure we could do that in just an hour, but we tried our best. So thank you, uh, gentlemen, for taking the time and for um, for this very um, fruitful, I hope, discussion. And I hope that you both also enjoyed being on our webinar. Uh, and lastly, I'd also like to thank Park Launch for organizing this and everybody who joined, who participated, who sent in their questions. Um, thank you to everybody who was involved in uh, making this little webinar possible tonight and that's it for from me today so i hope you all enjoyed and um, gentlemen thank you again and goodbye thank you thank you ali thank you thank you, thank you ali good thank you park launch